to the 84th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name's Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome returning viewers and for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could join us. So excited today, we actually went on a real adventure we did. to Fergus, Ontario, which is about two hours west of where we live. Mm -hmm. Not too far, we didn't venture up that much. No. <laughs> but we're excited to talk to you about that and the yarn store that we visited in Fergus was... The String Theory Yarn Shop. Beautiful yarn shop. Can't wait to talk about that. But before we do, Colleen will talk about what we're wearing. So first of all, let's talk about what May is wearing. She is wearing um, a hack of the A Little Bit Alexis Cowl by Romy Hill. Um, I just shortened it. I did the bottom part with a little bit of the top part, just because you don't like things all up around right. your neck. And so I used um, Barocco Comfort DK. And it was really nice. So it was the lovely blue and white, and it's really, really Very nice. soft. Yes. Very soft. It looks really yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. You nice. like it? Yeah, I like it. Perfect. Don't even know what's on there. There you go. So it must be comfy. It is. Okay. So that's what May's wearing. And I'm wearing the Dragon Belly Shawl. And that's by Joanna Lindahl. Now and this that is, looks really good on you too. Thank you. It's crocheted. And what I did was I used the Sheep to Swirl or Sheepy's Whirl, which is 60% cotton, 40% acrylic, so it's nice and comfy. Um, now, there was enough to do a couple of cowls and to do the shawl in that one. Love Be the color choice. Thank you, it is a gradient. There are 100 meters on this ball. Okay, there's um, 215 to 225 grams is what it says. So I'm really, really happy with it. Nice, very nice. Crocheted. It doesn't crocheted. look crocheted. I know, but I Looks love good. it. I love how it changes color, um, so I'm really enjoying wearing it. So that's what I'm wearing, and next we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object is the Down by the Creek Shawl by Cozy Up Knits. They're having a cotton make-along right now, so if you go and become part of their Ravelry group, you can enter if you've done something with cotton. This is a lovely pattern, and what I used um, is from Creek Gardens Crafts, and it's 100% Pima cotton sock. It's beautiful to work with, and what's nice is the lace, even in cotton, opens up. So we're going to take this across because it's long. So it's a wrap is what this is. It is very long. It's like the, the scarf that keeps on giving. <laughs> it is. And it's cotton, but look at how that, oh, I'm so happy. It's beautiful colors. Thank beautiful. you so much. I'm really happy with wow. it. So I used the natural um, from Creek Gardens Crafts and then I used their pastel set. They had six 20 gram skeins in it. I only used four of them. And I think it's lots long enough. If I'd added another color. Oh, my goodness. You don't want anything longer than that. <laughs> exactly. So I'm really happy with that. The weather is just now starting to get in Ontario. We're up about 12, 13 degrees. So it's time to put the wool aside for a little bit and start pulling right, down the cotton. Right. You have to. Because I imagine when you're a knitter, it is warm in the summer to knit. Warm. It is. Exactly. So and this it's, would be it's kind of tricky. It's kind of like the fashion industry. You kind of have to be a season ahead. So really in the heat of July and August, you should be making your sweaters for, I know, <laughs> October, November, December. Yeah. Um, I wish I was more organized, but anyway, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my first finished object. Now my second finished object is the Hitchhiker Beyond by Martina Bem. And I had made some hitchhikers. This is a little different because <clears throat> in this case, where the tooths of the, I guess, I don't know if it's teeth or not, but where those little things are is on the straight edge. And this is really neat construction. I like that it's nice and thin. It'll wrap around a couple of times. Now I haven't blocked it and this is garter stitch. So it would really block out but I don't think I need to block it so much. I was going to say, it feels like it's been blocked already. Yes, exactly. The yarn is now, beautiful. When you were knitting this, I thought, you've knit that before, and, it's, and you said, well, yes, I have, but 
This is the different, right? There's a hitchhiker and there's a hitchhiker beyond. Yes. And this was really, it was a neat construction. You kind of go in one direction and then in another. It was great. I quite like the size of this one, actually. Yeah, me too. So the yarn is 85% uh, merino, 15% nylon. It's called Happy Yarn Day. Um, and it's Ravenswood Fiber Company. Very soft. Exactly. I really, really like nice. it. And it's a product of Nova Scotia. Well, we like Nova Scotia. Exactly. That's Even though we nice. bought it in Ottawa. <laughs> Very but I'm nice. really happy with that. It's yeah. all colors, blues and purples and cool. all kinds of good things. So that's that. Now my final finished object is May's pair of socks. So it is the Prairie Socks by KF Jones of the Bakery Bears. And what I use, the first time I've ever used it, is Felici. And it's 75% merino wool, 25% nylon. And this is the color Rustic Cabin. Now May is a camper. And she, it looks like Rustic Cabin. She loves when you see them, camp. you'll know what I mean. Now, what I really like is the that... Beautiful colors. Oh, I know. It's gorgeous. A little bit of the This reminds me. We go to this place called the Pinery. It's a provincial park. Mm -hmm. And this reminds me of the Pinery, the colors that you would find in the fall. Absolutely. Isn't so it's real... I agree with you wholeheartedly. Yep. So I bought the yarn partly because it was on sale and partly because May does love to camp. Now, what's really interesting to me is I wasn't sure whether the self-striping would work with the textured pattern, but it really, really does. It, it's really nice. I and can't you've had these them. on. And they feel great. They feel great. Comfortable, is that anything? Exactly. Good. Wonderful. Thank you again. You're very welcome, my I'm dear. I'm never going to have to buy socks ever no. again. <laughs> but these are great. That's right. Good. So those are my finished objects. And May, how about you? I do have some finished objects that we'll discuss maybe in the little craft, smaller craft section because we did go on an adventure. Exactly. I can't wait to talk to you about. Um, and I can talk to the both that in the craft section. Perfect. So next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is another pair of socks. It is another pair of the prairie socks, just like I made for May, but this is for my son for his birthday which isn't for a while so it's all good um and this is the felici same idea and this color is called the bayou which is good now what i'm doing and i'll have may help me out with this is that i am knitting these concurrently so with may socks i knit them two at a time and i love knitting two at a time and i thought well let me see what i think about knitting them concurrently what that means is you do kind of five rows here, five rows here, you know, and you just keep going back and forth. And I am finding it that the socks are knitting up quickly. I'm not going to get second sock syndrome. And I really, really like the colors. There is one big blue stripe that threw me totally for a loop, but I really like it. I love the colors. I was going to say, I would never put these colors together, but it exactly. works. Exactly. I'm really, really nice. these needles are Knit Picks Sunstruck um, and they're lovely. They're nice and light. They've got a nice of a tip that it makes knitting socks and doing this pattern in it easy. I really, really like it. Now, would socks be nice to knit for the summer? Because they don't seem very heavy and you wouldn't need They're them. not. And what I like, if I'm knitting socks in the car, these won't be them. Because these, I am notoriously for dropping a DPN. But if I have Magic Loop where I'm knitting two at a time, then I can't drop the needle unless I throw all right. of it on the floor. Very nice. Yeah, so I'm really, really happy with how those are turning out. Right. Very nice yarn, too. Exactly. Not expensive yarn, but... No. Good deal. 30% off. Came from the States. It did come fairly quickly, so I'm really, really happy with that. Okay. Now, my next work in progress is called the Multnoma, and that's by Kate Ray. And I have knit one of these before, and I knit it in yarn, actually, that's very similar. It's variegated. And I had this skein of Fino. So it's Manos del Uruguay Fino. 70% um, wool, 30% silk. This is the inkwell colorway. Feels nice, the yarn. It's what I lovely. love is, is really cool is how you look at that on, you know, the pattern here. Right. And then you take another color and you knit it. And it's really cool to see different colors. Exactly. And I don't know with the podcast of how knitters feel about seeing your knitted work in uh, the colors that you choose yeah. is great. What is nice about Ravelry um, is the fact that you can go on and put in the pattern name and then 
see it in then you could see it knit in different colors and different yarn and you can get an idea or you can put in the yarn so you can put in fino and then you can see what things have been done with this now or you I'm, can just watch our podcast i'm sure you exactly can <laughs> <laughs> now i'm on a short cord so okay i'll stretch out this side but you can see that this was plain garter to start and now i'm dealing with the feather and fan part of it and I'm liking it. Um, this was okay to knit in the car. There's only one row that I really have to worry about, which is the one where you put the eyelets in. Um, Why do you said really that about like the it. car? Because I was going to ask you, did you knit this in the car? I was working on it in See, the car. See, you thought I was watching the road. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there are 490 yards in this skein. So I probably will be able to make it a little bit bigger. Um, than the one that I did before. But once I get them both done, I'm gonna show them to you, and then you're gonna see the difference between doing it in a variegated yarn and doing it in a plain yarn. It does Very make nice. a big difference. Very nice color too. Okay, so that's my second one. Now my third work in progress is not um, knitting. <laughs> I decided I wanted to do some work with embroidery. So there was a kit, this is a tea towel, it's called Happy Bird, and that it is, and it was four dollars and ninety nine cents at Lens Mills, and so I decided kit? for the whole kit. And everything you needed was in there. Everything I needed was in there, so I was really, really happy with that. Now, it's kind of cute. Done. And this is so Colleen. It says, "Today I will be happier bird with French fries than a bird with then the French Colleen, fries." Then uh, Colleen goes out for French fries yes. all the time. The joke is, when I say to May, "I'm going out for milk." By the way, I do not enjoy milk to drink. <laughs> so when I'm going out for milk, it I really know she's means going for French fries. I, I'm going through some some drive through because for when some you look fries. at the two of us, you would wonder who's the one that eats the French fries. <laughs> I'm the one that looks like I eat the French fries. I don't eat the French fries. Colleen no, eats the French I fries. No, I do. I yeah. do enjoy a French fry. That's for sure. So here's my work. Now it's obviously it's going to need to be pressed. This is where I'm done. I'm just about done. I'm at the bottom putting in some little bits of sand. But this was the first one that I started and I really like this one because there's all different kinds of embroidery stitches to try. So you learned some things. So I learned a lot and thank goodness for YouTube. It allowed me to learn a lot um, and I'm really, really thrilled. So I'm pretty close to being done and then I will need to wash it because when you wash it, this is the amazing thing, all the blue lines that told you where to put your embroidery stuff disappear. Wow, that's mm -hmm. kind of neat. I know, I'm really, really thrilled Well, it's neat to look over and see you do something that isn't knitting. Exactly. <laughs> that's cool. I have to concentrate a little bit more on this because you have to figure out where to put your needle in. And then sometimes I jab myself and then it's, there's, <laughs> there's blood on the tea towel. And what are you going to do? So anyway, thank goodness you have to wash it. <laughs> that's great. So that's that. Now, my last one uses Sheepy's Katona, which is a cotton, and it was a kit. And I showed this on the podcast a long time ago and then I got stuck not stuck because I didn't know what to do stuck because I wasn't brave about what to do so I'll show you what's going on it looks like I've got all kinds of parts so what this is it's crocheted it's amigurumi and it's meadow the cow and I had done the head and I had done the ears but I didn't I wasn't being brave about putting the ears on the head I was worried they wouldn't look right and anyway so if you take a look, there's my wee cow. That's the cow's head anyway. There's the horns, there's the ears. I think they're pretty well set up there. It's very cute, but when I think of cow, I think black and white. I know. You know, like, I'm not sure that I would guess that was a cow. Just, just look at that Without picture. it saying meadow the cow? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would not have guessed that was a cow. No. It's cute, I love it. I love the workmanship yep, exactly. you've done, but. It's cute. I think the idea is it's for a wee person who... So wee people don't really know what cows are supposed to look like, I guess. Or wee people, you know, blue, pink babies, that oh, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, but we don't want to do that either to the uh, poor little child. I know. Anyway, we're just working on this cow. So there's the head. Check the poor head Polly's off. Poor been working hard on this, and I'm like, it doesn't even look like a cow. All right, so that's that. Here is the body, which looks a little bit like a pear, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to do a little bit more stuffing. I have to sew things on. I have to tell you, I love this kind of stuff. Like, I love the... I know, it's fun. So it's it like is tricky. This... Oh. <laughs> anyway, these are the, the feet. feet. Some of the feet. <laughs> I need to do two more, and then I get to attach it all together. So once I got past the sewing the ears on the head and just 
going, it doesn't matter, I'm just going to do it, it's going to be okay. You just have to be brave sometimes. And I know for some people it's just, you know, I said to you, I'm so worried. You said, just throw those ears on the cow. And I said, <laughs> okay, yeah, but I'm worried about it. I want it to be okay. But I'm well, thinking it looks pretty good. That's why your your stuff is so good, because you take the time to do things, and, and it shows in your workmanship, right. whatever you do, anything. Yeah. Like... But, you know, that's a good thing. It's a good quality to have. Oh, well, thank you for that. No, so let's gonna... put your sheet. I mean, cow. I mean, <laughs> whatever big, that I is. I mean, whatever that is. All right. I'm just going to try and do this without making too much of a mess. So that's what the kit came as. Um, so the whole box. There's a few things in there that I don't I want to follow. Yep. Exactly. But anyway, so it ordered it off Amazon. I don't know if they have it now. There's a bunch of different ones that you can order. Well, um, they have them in the book, I think, here. Yes. They have like... Um, Looks like a fox and a monkey and uh, a bunny rabbit, a sheep, a frog. All kinds all of goodies. All kinds of little things in there. So cool. Exactly. And the neat thing is it's in all different kinds of languages. So that's kind of cool. That's helpful well. if you speak Chinese. Exactly. <laughs> Mandarin. <laughs> Portuguese. You never know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So those are my works in progress. Let me get these out of the way. Move the cow. <laughs> and May, how about you? Works in progress. Well, um... I don't because I haven't <laughs> finished all my work. I've finished all my little uh, projects that I've right. been working on, and I'll show you that in the craft part. Okay. Um, and that's what I'll I'll do. But I'm not really working on anything right at the moment. Okay. Um, just because I just completed my projects. Okay. I can but I it. I can't wait to start on something new because I've been working on those other things for a while. But we can talk about that. All after. right. So next we're going to talk about our craft adventure and then a yarn store adventure as well. Colleen, what have you been up to in crafts and adventures? And I know we're going to talk a bit about a real adventure that we had at the mm -hmm. store, which is exciting. Absolutely. I've just got a, a one thing I want to talk about in the craft thing. Do okay. you have anything? or? Um, I just have been doing a little bit of embroidery, and I'll have more to show next time. Oh, that's going to be fun. Okay. Um, and my what I have been up to in my crafts, um, just quickly, it's taken me forever. Uh, <laughs> we're having great. a little miniature show in June, and June the 1st uh, right. is going to be at uh, the East Lions Centre. Oh, excellent. And uh, I'll get more information when I get the dates and the time okay. for that. So I've been trying to make some things, and I started making these couches, and every couch I made, I learned something new. Okay. But the couch process has taken me, you know. Um, these look amazing, though. I made four of them. They look fantastic. But it's taken me a little while because I'm trying to perfect uh, how to... I think she to, has it down. No, I don't. I still have to, to do some work on them. And I'm hoping that you will make me some little pillows or oh, something absolutely. to go with them. I can do that for sure. And then we could sell those. Perfect. At the little show. Um, I can do that. You know, I think upholstering would have been a good skill to have. <laughs> it takes exactly. me a while. It took me a while to, to do it. And everyone, like I said, I'm learning and it's doing something different. But... I'll have a few to sell at the little show. I'm not sure how much I can sell for. The amount of work that went into them, they should be going for about $500. <laughs> and you always joke with me that there's a, a entire bottle of glue in one. A tile bottle of glue probably in one of them. And uh, a lot of cursing. Um, I'm usually upstairs. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're done. Thank goodness. They look it's great. But Fantastic. the real thing is we actually went on a real adventure to the yarn store in Fergus, and we can talk all about that. First of all, uh, we it was raining. It was. It was raining, and we, we had a nice drive, though. It's, even in the rain, it was nice. It was just mm -hmm. nice to get out after the winter right. and after COVID. Mm -hmm. Made sure we had our masks. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went to a Fergus, which was an awesome little town. Mm -hmm. It only has a population of about 20,000. Oh, okay. And it was named after a lawyer. Um, Ferguson, he came from Scotland and he settled there. Oh, but okay. it was first called the Little Falls, and then in, I think in 1836 they changed it to Fergus after that lawyer that okay. had from Scotland that settled okay. there. Very Scottish, um, very, <laughs> very Scottish theme there. Like yeah. we had, as you can see, with the little kilties. And um, do you want me to put the video in now, Colleen? And then we can come back and talk about that. That sounds like a great so idea. So why don't I put the video in? You'll see what I mean about the little Scottish flavor there. And we'll talk about it when we come back.
Hope you enjoyed that little video. It might give you a little idea what it looks like in Fergus. Not a big town, but it's very welcoming, I found. Very Absolutely. stylish. Um, the uh, Highland Games. The person that's coming to be in the Highland Games um, is the, let me just see if I can get this straight, Jamie's godfather on Outlander. If you watch Outlander, he'll be there. We used to watch Outlander. We don't watch it anymore. No. Um, but if you're into that, go to the Highland Games. Right. It's the biggest Highland Games in North America. Oh they my have goodness, there. that's mm -hmm. amazing. It brings in a lot of people. Exactly. Uh, a lot of fun stuff. So you can even have a website if you want to volunteer there. It's just a fun place to be, and I think it's in August. I don't have the exact date. Okay, well, I it. just happened to have it. <gasps> just happened to have it. So, um, the... Uh, oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I'll talk to you all about it. There's a Fergus Fiber Festival at the end of May, May 28th. There's a summer sidewalk sale, June 22nd to 26th. Um, there is a Fergus Medieval Fair on July 23rd. The Fergus Scottish Festival, this is what I think what you're talking right. about, is the August 12th, 13th, and 14th. There is a Fergus car show on the 9th of September. Oh my goodness. There's lots of things. There's lots on. of things. And on the 3rd of December, there's a Santa Claus parade. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> but we didn't stay in Fergus. Um, there is, when you go to the uh, Highland Games, there is camping, and I think it's all full up because I okay. did go on the website right. and have a look because I thought right. that would be a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. But it's all full. Okay. And um, but we stayed in a place called St. Jacobs, which is probably about half an hour right. uh, from Fergus. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Mennonites in St. Jacobs. Like we must have drove by, and as you saw in the video, mm -hmm. but we must have drove by about I don't know, twenty buggies, thirty buggies, Absolutely. and pouring rain. And, and a lot of them weren't covered. No. They had an umbrella. Exactly. And very different way of life, but. I find it very interesting. It's, it's fascinating. Really cool. fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. And then from our hotel room, um, we heard an auctioneer and he was auctioning <laughs> off. What is that sound? And I, I thought maybe they were auctioning off. I don't know. I didn't know they were auctioning off horses and buggies. Exactly. Which was really cool. They went on for quite a while. It was very absolutely. loud. That's and right. all the Mennonite community was all over there exactly. uh, bidding on these horses, yeah, which exactly. was really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, the the St. Jacob's Market was closed, but they do have a little theater there. Right. Um, what else did we do there? We went swimming in the the Holiday Inn. Then we went mm -hmm. swimming in the pool. Because COVID, I think you had to schedule yourself in the pool. Absolutely. And so we had the pool all to ourselves. We did. It was which lovely. was kind of fun. And um, so it was a really fun, it was nice to get away, it was nice to be in the hotel, um, and then Colleen's going to tell you all about the yarn store, which in itself was a whole adventure. I was just, I just exactly. felt really good in that yarn store. It was exactly. awesome. That's right. And you can talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so it is called the String Theory Yarn Shop. It's been open for uh, um, one and a half years. Miranda is the owner. Um, and when we were in there, we actually went in on Saturday and on Sunday, not to shop twice, I'll <laughs> just explain. So when we went in on the Saturday, um, they were doing a felting class. It brought back memories. I had PTSD <laughs> because of my poking fingers. But was really exactly. cool in there, though. I noticed what they were doing, which we didn't do. Mm -hmm. I tried to make an animal and just try to make it right. from scratch. What they had done was cut out like a leaf. Okay. And they had a big block of foam. And they were stamping oh. the the yarn, whatever right. that yarn is, right. on the foam, foam right. leaf. Oh, so wow. it looked like it would be a little bit less on the fingers. Okay. So I might try to try something like that. It okay. was really cool. Now, I know we've got some fiber for you to play with. And I also know we have some felt in needles. Yeah, we'll work on that maybe later. Because <laughs> you know, got to get her. You've got to get her those gloves that don't let you cut your finger off. Yes, That's what we yes. need to do. But the people in there, there was maybe I don't know, 10, 15 people in there, exactly. and they were loving the class. Like exactly. they were enjoying it, it and convincing. It was just a great atmosphere. I know. I'd really didn't realize how much I'd missed. Being out, being and out, store. and doing adventures, and uh, touching the yarn, and being and exactly. seeing, and talking to the people, and, and Miranda exactly. was lovely. Like she, she was. was awesome. So they have things for crochet, for knitting, embroidery, cross stitch. The shop is really, really nice and bright. Big windows, nice bright colors on the walls. Does things online? Did I don't know if you mentioned that? I didn't not? mention but, that. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, and I'm going to ask you to talk about the granite tabletop. Oh, right. Because I noticed the woodworking in the store, which was really cool. Okay. It had this table that had these um, railroad tie 
legs and base oh. and I thought how they ever make that and lift that and I thought maybe Morena had something to do with that mm -hmm. being a knitter and all oh, right <laughs> <laughs> but um, after talking to her they had actually taken over a, a store that made granite countertops so oh my goodness that was actually in the store and she said it was very heavy to move and right their nice desk there was left and it was a granite countertop. So they lucked out a little bit, and it, it gives it a little bit of character in the store. Exactly. I loved it. Exactly, exactly. And um, we did luck out because it was local yarn shop day, even though not Fergus is not local to us. But um, they were doing, you didn't have to pay the tax. No and, tax event, so it was great. And that's great in Ontario. I don't know if you know, if you're from America, um, your tax, I don't know what it is, 6 or 7%. Sometimes, uh, yeah. It's not, like our tax is 13%, so that's a big savings. It was a big um, savings. So great. when we go to America and we find things cheaper, and the tax is only 6 or 7%, come to Canada, you pay more money, right. and it's 13% tax. Exactly. And I think it's not hidden like in Europe, some countries. Mm -hmm. When you go up to the counter, you pay like an item is $20. The tax is already in there. Oh, okay. Whereas here, the, the price might be seventeen fifty plus tax. So you end up paying $20 or more. Yeah, exactly. And there's H10. We have 6%. And so I always get them mixed up. Six percent HST and GST. We have right. them both. The one was only supposed to be temporary. I think they were both supposed to be temporary, <laughs> but and it never did come back yeah, off. So thirteen percent tax is a, is a lot. Exactly. So, exactly. Anyway, uh, so we you did that that savings, and uh, Miranda gave you a nice little. She bag. gave me a little bag. So I'm going to show that all in souvenirs because they're definitely souvenirs, um, and we really really enjoyed speaking with Miranda finding out things the one thing I have started to do is to ask people what their favorite notion is that they have and so she told me that her favorite notion was locking stitch markers and she talked about using them in her knitting but also using them in her crocheting so she doesn't lose the last loop of the crochet work and I understand exactly what she's talking about as I'm busy working on dear old meadow the cow um, <laughs> then I thought, oh, that's perfect. It, things won't get lost. So that was, it was interesting to talk to her about it that. It was. Now, I highly recommend going, if you're going to Fergus, when you're at the Highland Games or you're at one of these yeah. festivals, or if you just want to go to Fergus for a drive, highly recommend it. Great little community to it go to. It was great. Uh, we didn't eat right in Fergus, but the th I think there's some restaurants there that Lots you could them, eat yeah. in. Um, we did manage to go to the Scottish shop and buy course. some crisps. <laughs> Maybe lots of crisps. <laughs> we like those onion crisps, so Scottish yeah, onion yeah, crisps. Walkers, walkers, walkers yeah. cheese and onion, yeah. yeah. They are And so we good. did go into the chocolate store, but we were very good. We, we didn't, didn't buy anything, buy anything in, the in the chocolate Everything store. chocolate, as you saw in the video. But it was so good. So worth a trip to Fergus. It would be a beautiful, Absolutely. and the, when the weather's nice, I think it would be a beautiful yeah. place. And do check out that yarn shop. It was mm -hmm. beautiful. Yes. Now, what happened, that was their plan to go to that yarn shop, and then we were heading towards our hotel, and we went to past a yarn store in Alora, and it's called the Dropped Stitch. Now it's small, but it's cute, um, and so it's it's got one, two walls of things, and one of the things um, is a like a monthly sock club. Um, and there's certain things about that that I'll talk about in souvenirs. Right, beautiful colors in that yarn that you did buy, you end up buying. Exactly. But, uh, and there's not much, I mean, Allura is not a big community either, no. but they have the Allura Gorge that uh, yeah. and we, we had been to in the past, but yes. we, didn't, we didn't go there this time just again because yeah. the weather was raining and it was just more yeah. of a pass. And, yeah, pass exactly. Through. And by the time we were heading to the hotel, I think we were pretty tired from our drive right. and we were just going. So we actually didn't even go down the main street in Allura. Right. The, the, um, yarn store I think has just been one month at that location right I did ask her what her favorite uh, tape I can't remember her name I apologize um, but her favorite notion is and it was her tape measure yeah. just a not even one that goes back in you know the round ones that you get no nope, just a plain tape measure she said is what she likes the best there you go okay so that is our adventure those are the yarn stores that we went to see and next we're going to talk about souvenirs My first souvenir comes from the Drop Stitch, and the owner, remember I couldn't remember her name, is Shaylin Ferguson. Shaylin, that's not a common name, but no. it's really cool how it's spelled. Exactly, spell. absolutely. So that is where the um, Yarn of the Month Club comes from. Now, this yarn is from 
the company called Things Created Equal. I hear about it all the time when I'm watching the Cozy Up Knit Sisters, and that's because they are in Alberta. And I think if I get it right, it's Mountain View County, Alberta. So what happens is, now they had January, February, March, April must have been there as well. I fell in love with January, which is funny because I don't really fall in love with January because it's usually cold and winter, but I loved this color. And I was drawn over to that color. Like yeah. That's what... Uh, exactly. So here's what's funny. I tried to keep this bag nicely. Didn't no matter how I tried to get this out, <laughs> I ripped it. So what happens is in this package, first of all, you get the picture that the yarn colors come from. So that's the first one that definitely looks like January. Then what you get is a skein of yarn plus a stitch marker. So there's the color. It's called Basic Sock. It's nice. It's beautiful. It did a great job. Didn't and it? I'm telling you that there's no way that's going to be a stitch marker. That is going to get put on a silver chain and that is going to be a necklace that I wear. I can <laughs> just tell you because I, I fell in love with the stitch marker. I mean, I fell in love with the yarn, but the stitch marker was just brilliant as well. And the idea is that when you buy this package, it's called Rooted, that what they do is they donate a tree for reforestation in BC. So every skein... Um, counts as one tree planted. That's cool. To know that your, know. your hard earned money yes, absolutely. goes to a tree. Exactly. And of course that's not exactly why I buy yarn, <laughs> but I was really happy to support that. I thought that was that was that's very a nice, nice thing to support. All right, so that is the dropped stitch in Alora. Now we're going to talk about the Fergus yarn store called the String Theory Yarn Shop. And once again Miranda Holmes is the um, owner of it and they have these cards and what it says is buy 11 skeins and get the 12th free so just so you see I'm started I'm not sure I'm going to get to that but that's okay so it was a great well, she time. does do things online so she that's... does oh oh <laughs> oh that's <laughs> and right you could go on her website and exactly. look at that and see how that works exactly so let's talk about what I found First of all, we talked about the um, locking stitch markers, and these are what she had to sell. And those are Knitter's Pride. They've got five lively colors is what it says. And I don't have those lively colors, so I thought, well, I'm gonna start making a um, little notions pouch. I'll go to a yarn store, ask what their favorite notion is. If I don't already have 12 of them, I will buy one and put it in the notion bag. I thought that would be kind of fun. Both, um, Miranda and Shaylin said, that's an odd question. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe it's because I'm odd. I don't know. But you I really thought, want to know what people like the best. I do. Knitting, though. Absolutely. When it comes to notions, sometimes there's notions that you don't even know. Think. Exactly. So I'm happy about that. Now, what did I find first? To be honest with you, this is the thing I found first. And this is called a Modern Patterns for Home and Family Love Grows Here Embroidery. So what is in here is a six inch hoop, two pieces of fabric, two needles, and then there are 10 different templates you, you can iron on the fabric and then all the um, embroidery floss that you need. So there's some, I liked this one with the little tents for Miss May and her camping. <laughs> so I like that one. And there's another one that says home and it's got little plants beside so it. This would be nice to knit at a campfire. Rather, exactly. You know, or so, I mean. Exactly. So it would it's be great. heavy. It's, yeah. Exactly. Nice little uh, project that you've gotten into. Exactly. And the funny thing was, so yesterday when we got home, I thought, I really want to look in this thing. I want to look at it all. So I carefully took the sticker off the top and I was trying to get the box open. And May said, Colleen, you can't open that until you've shown it on the podcast. I went, but I really want to open it. It's kind of like that commercial. Yeah. Why are you taking the tips? I felt the same thing. It was like, please let me open it. But anyway, it, I'm glad. Now you can open it today. I know, because like I will Christmas. tell you that box isn't going to open without a little tear. I can tell you. So <laughs> that was a very good thing you told me. Okay. So I'm very happy about that. I realize that now all of a sudden I'm doing embroidery. So a little crochet, a little embroidery, all kinds of good things. Um, but it's fun to change it up. And I think it's good for your hands to do things different with things, different things. Right. So I'm happy with that. Now... I did find some yarn. What a surprise. And this is called Wool Interrupted. It's MCN. It says hand dyed with care in small batches in Muskoka, Ontario. Um, 
and MCN, a little bit of cashmere. And so I love soft. the name of this color. It's called Coco Sangria. And you got this at the String Theory. And for at the String Theory Art Shop. Yep. Nice. I'm really, really happy love with that. Love the color. I do too. I was doing the, you know, what color mm. shall I do? Oh, it's kind of got purple in it. A little bit. It's a little bit of purple. I nice. know. Very soft. So I'm very happy with that. And I Good. there's a perfect pattern that I purchased, I don't know, six or seven months ago. And it needs to have tonal yarn, which is what that is. Not variegated, but tonal. And that is going to do such a nice job in that other pattern. Very nice. Now, the funny thing is, we were in, we purchased, we got what we needed to get. And then away we went. And all of a sudden, Miranda came running out after us, and she was nice enough to hand us this bag. Oh, I, I love saw those bags. Exactly. So this says, String Theory Yarn Shop Community Entanglement. And I thought that was great. Um, and so that's going to hold my project when I do that. Nice. Exactly. No, we did that go was back very kind on, of her. We went back on Sunday so we yes. could get a picture of the front because we, we couldn't really get the picture on the Saturday. Right. And we really everybody. wanted to get a photograph of the front and how it was. And just welcoming and warm. Exactly. And I really highly recommend if you're in that area to drop into that yarn store exactly. or go on its website and go online. Exactly. So because Miranda had told us on Saturday, she said, you know, when it's not classes, I kind of have this Right. circle around the fireplace and I thought oh I need to see what that looks and like and you said you would love to knit there so I, I did and I would we may have to move to Fergus that's all there is because there's a nice yarn store there <laughs> yeah that's going to be number one priority yeah. is there a yarn store that's yeah. right so it was quite the little adventure Fergus. exactly so those are my souvenirs now May now we did go to Fergus for another reason because yes. um, there was a miniature show there right and I'm just going to pop in this little video of me going into the miniature show a little bit and then we can talk about it afterwards. Perfect. Enjoyed that little video give you an idea of what the, the miniature show looked like it was my first ever uh, miniature show and um, it's not like the one in Chicago which is like I guess it's grandiose this oh was like goodness. a small town Fergus community center right um, but lots of different ideas lots of um, inspiring uh, exactly. things to inspire me to make um, and you know what was really neat about doing it we usually in a yarn store I'm looking at the yarn, feeling the yarn, going around, trying to see what would be nice to have, what, you know, what kind of things are there. And May's taking all the pictures. Yeah, you're kind of oblivious to me being there <laughs> in a yarn store. I, I find that I'm just kind of walking around. Except when we get to the point that I want to buy something and I say, this color or this color? <laughs> then I'm not oblivious yeah. to her. So anyway, when we went to this miniature shop, well, every time I say miniature, I think everything's tiny, but... All the things are tiny, but the people are big. <laughs> so um, then it was my turn to have the camera. So right. I said to me, you go enjoy, look at the things you want to look at, and then I'm going to take pictures. And it was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, good. 
You had, you had a purpose. I had a purpose. That's how I feel in a yarn store because I'm not interested in the yarn, to be honest. I can't believe I'm saying that on a yarn podcast. <laughs> but I'm not really interested in the yarn. I am interested, though, and I do feel I have a purpose when I take the camera. And exactly. You and you are a way. good photographer, well, videographer, director. You didn't do too bad with your... Okay, <laughs> thanks. And we did run into some of my miniature people in the miniature group. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of fun. And I did pick up some souvenirs. Okay. Um... Oh, the big thing was, I'll talk about the souvenirs, I'll talk, then I'll tell you about the other So many things. exciting things. Yes. So I just picked up a chair because I really liked the um, template of it, and I, it kind of came off, but I uh, would love to maybe make some of those, so I'm going to make some of those. Perfect. Um, we are doing it our miniature one. We're doing a um, pet store, mm -hmm. uh, inspired pet store, so I found some dog dish. Oh, just very nice. That. And um, I crate... I found it, you're probably thinking, why are you buying this stuff? But I, I uh, want the idea of it all, and then exactly. I can make my own. That makes total sense. And uh, this is one of the crates I made, but this is one of their crates, which was very different. So I'll try and do that. Oh, fantastic. Then they had door prizes. One of them, we didn't buy tickets for the dollhouse because we have nowhere to put the dollhouse. No, as you that's saw true. in the video on the front door. Right. Um, but they had other little door prizes, and uh, Grandpa's Dollhouse, which is in St. Thomas, which isn't too far from us. Right, exactly. Um, it had given a door prize, and they called out a ticket number. The person wasn't there or had already gone home, and then they called out the next number, and Colleen couldn't find their tickets. I was searching And I wasn't hard. worried. I had given up. I thought, you know what, it doesn't really matter. We never win anything anyway. Next thing I know, Colleen's going, May, you got the number. May, you take this ticket. thing. You got the... Yeah. So I won the door prize, which was very this exciting. This is so cute. And it is, I'll take a picture of this so you can see it but it is a little mixer oh, miniature it's mixer so cute it is cool i don't know how they make those ones but those I are really neat yeah. and i like the plug holy yeah. smokes it's fantastic it's, it's all the details when you do miniatures, exactly that's you know? right that's really really good anyway it was a fun trip between the yarn store and the miniature store it was mm -hmm. kind of a combination of our both um crafts and things that exactly. we like to do so it was yeah. a win-win it what was they a win-win for sure yeah so thanks so much for watching if you like what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up, comment down below, let us know if there's a store that you think we should see, if there's a craft you think we should try, um, because we just love doing this for you. Thanks for sharing our adventure with us, and until next time, you take care.